For those of us on the road, reliable internet access can be a challenge, but Starlink satellite internet services now making it even easier for RV travelers and campers to stay connected with their high-speed internet service. But Starlink has made several significant changes again to its service offerings just in the past few days and to its terms of service. In this video, we're gonna dive into all the details of these plans and share the current state of Starlink internet so you can make an informed decision about whether or not it's suitable for your travels. I'm gonna review how it's been working for us for the last almost two years now. But first, let's give a brief overview of what Starlink is. Starlink is a satellite internet system developed by Elon Musk's SpaceX, and it aims to provide high-speed, low-latency broadband access to users worldwide, particularly those in remote areas where internet connectivity is unreliable. The Starlink system consists of a constellation of small satellites orbiting the Earth, which transmit and receive signals to ground-based receivers, or user terminals, the satellite dish that you receive when you purchase Starlink. With download speeds getting up to 150 megabits per second or more sometimes, Starlink has the potential to revolutionize internet connectivity and bridge the digital divide. But it is undoubtedly in its infancy. The service is available in select regions of the world with plans for expanded coverage in the coming years. Most of the US is covered, but many areas are at capacity and you have to get on a waiting list for fixed location service. As of May, 2023, it's actually not even on their website yet, but it's happening. Starlink has simplified its offerings into four plans, standard, priority, mobile, and mobile priority. These replace the residential service, roam, business, and maritime plans, among others. The standard plan is designed for fixed locations. It replaces the residential plan and can be no longer moved around the country. The portability add-on that it used to have has been entirely removed. The priority plan is also for fixed locations, offering the same speeds and unlimited data as the standard plan. However, users will receive higher priority access to the network during congested periods. The mobile plan is intended for mobile users, such as RV owners, providing internet access on the go. The plan offers lower priority data than the standard plan and may be slower during times of network congestion. You can move the mobile plan around a given continent and use it wherever you stop, but it cannot be used in motion. The mobile priority plan offers priority data for mobile users and allows for in-motion use, allowing RVs and other vehicles to access the internet while on the actual move. I'm gonna go into more detail about each individual plan in a moment, but first, it's essential to know which equipment is available because some only work for specific plans. Starlink offers customers three equipment options, each with unique features and limitations. The standard Starlink dish is the first option. It's priced at $599 US and comes with a motorized dish mounted on an arm. It also includes a router, a power cable, and a proprietary ethernet cable with non-standard ends that links between the dish and the router. The cable used to be 75 foot long, but we're hearing that people are receiving shorter cables now in the 35 to 50 foot range. The standard dish can be used either with the included stand for setting the dish out on the ground or with mounting accessories to attach it permanently, like on a roof or a pole. When the dish is set up, it will automatically search for the best angle and position itself to get the clearest view of the sky, usually north in North America, but not always. The standard kit is not officially usable in motion. People have had luck getting it to work in motion in the past, but it is against the terms of service and we suspect it will be enforced going forward with the launch of these new plans. The second option is the high performance Starling kit, which is priced at 2,500 US dollars, significantly more, and also comes with a dish on a post, but the dish is much larger and has an additional robust power supply unit. Like the standard kit, this option is not officially usable in motion. However, the high performance kit is designed to provide faster download speeds than the standard kit and its larger antenna is less affected by obstructions like trees. The high performance kit uses significantly more power than the standard dish, making it challenging for RVers trying to conserve batteries. The third and final option is the flat high performance Starlink kit, also priced at $2,500. It's identical to the high performance dish but comes flat mounted and has no motors. The only difference in performance is that it's designed to be mounted on a vehicle. It is also the only option officially usable in motion. 
It's ideal for users who frequently travel or require internet access while on the move, but it still uses a significant amount of electricity. Okay, so the plan offerings. The standard plan is the plan designed for fixed location folks who require reliable internet connection for their home or business. It's for more than just residential users anymore. You can use it for businesses. You can only use it from your registered service address, however. You can change your address as often as you want, but there must be availability in your area. So for RVers, you might want to consider the standard plan only if you're like a snowbird traveling to a fixed location for the winter or something like that. The standard plan is at capacity in many areas and you have to get on a waiting list to receive access. Some people on the wait list have been waiting for years now. The standard plan is $120 a month in congested areas and $90 a month in areas with fewer users where they're trying to attract more people to use it. The standard service cannot be paused. If you stop your service, you may lose access at your address. One of the new changes is that the standard plan is now unlimited again. Previously, a one terabyte limit was announced. It never actually, I think, went into force. It was supposed to go into place in April. And after you reached that limit in a month, your data was then deprioritized to the same level as the mobile plan. Deprioritized data refers to data that may experience slower speeds or lower network priority during times of network congestion. This is a common practice among internet service providers to manage network resources and ensure a consistent user experience for all the customers out there. The standard plan can now be used with either the standard dish or the high performance dish, but not with the flat mounted high performance dish. Overall, the standard plan is the best choice for households that require faster and more reliable internet speeds than traditional satellite or DSL providers can offer. It provides an affordable and convenient alternative for those living in remote or rural areas with limited access to high-speed internet otherwise. The Starlink Priority Plan is a step up from the standard plan, offering higher priority access to Starlink's network resources. This means that users on the priority plan will generally experience faster download speeds, particularly during peak usage times. The priority plan also includes unlimited data, a change from the former business plan that it replaces, allowing users to stream and download without worrying about hitting data caps. However, after a set amount of that high priority data is used, users may be subject to deprioritization. They go back down basically to the standard plan. Starlink is charging $250 per terabyte of data and you can get it on one terabyte, two terabyte and six terabyte packages. And after your allotment is up, you will drop down to standard data or you can pay 50 cents a gigabyte for extra priority data, which seems really expensive. Gigabytes go quick. The priority plan comes with a higher monthly fee than the standard plan, of course, but those who require abnormal amounts of data, like businesses with many users, a campground, for instance, the additional cost might be worth it. You can get the priority plan with either the standard or high performance dish. Now, the plan that most of you listening to this video are going to be interested in, the Starlink mobile plan, is designed for those who need internet access while on the move. It was formerly called Starlink RV, and then briefly Starlink Roam. This plan is ideal for those who frequently travel by RV, truck, or any type of mobile vehicle, but it only works on land or very close to land, like on rivers and lakes. It often will deliver the same speeds and unlimited data as standard and priority plans, but it is deprioritized, so in times of network congestion, it will be slower. And as more users join the network, that could be more problematic. More users are joining the network faster than satellites are getting into space. It offers unlimited data in two flavors, regional, which is $150 a month for use on your home continent, and global, which is $200 a month for use anywhere around the world that SpaceX is authorized to offer service. The mobile plan can be used with any of the three dishes that Starlink offers, but does not allow for in-motion use, even if you have the flat high performance dish. That's a new change. A lot of people bought that flat high performance dish with the intent of being able to use it in motion. And now it looks like they're going to have to go to a more expensive plan in order to be able to do that. Although deprioritized data may be experienced during periods of heavy network congestion, Starlink has a new option for users of the mobile plan to get around it. You can buy priority data at $2 per gigabyte. Again, that's a lot of money. The data can be used anywhere Starlink has service, including in the middle of the ocean or while in motion with a dish that allows for it. So you could have the regular dish on the regional plan 
and you could pay a little bit extra if you wanted to be able to use it in motion here and there. That's an option. The mobile plan can be paused on a per month basis. You can't do that with the standard version. You can stop paying for it in the months that you aren't traveling. And finally, there's the mobile priority plan, which is similar to the mobile plan, but can be used in motion and worldwide where Starlink has service. Like the regular priority plan, you will pay fixed amounts for packages of priority data. It's $250 for 50 gigabytes, a thousand for a terabyte, 5,000 for five terabytes, and then $2 per gigabyte of additional priority data after that. So I know that's all clear as mud. I do have this all laid out in an article that you can check out at rvmiles.com. I'll link it in the description for this video. If you're having a problem choosing which plan or you might want to change which plan you're using later, Starlink has made a dramatic improvement on that front. They now provide an easy way to switch plans. You can access the online portal at any time and make changes to your plan or switch between the priority and regular plans as needed. Now, we've been using the Starlink residential plan, which is now the standard plan for over a year now, full time on the road from Florida to Virginia to Baja to Oregon and everywhere in between. We have the grandfathered portability service. You can no longer travel with the residential plan without changing your address, but folks that had the portability service can still use it. We're a family of five heavy internet users with online classes, Zoom meetings, and YouTube videos to upload like this one. I'm gonna be uploading this video with Starlink and we consume lots of streaming video. Starlink is now our primary source of internet, but it's not our only source. We also carry a cellular hotspot with AT&T data and two Verizon cell phones with tethering data available. In very few locations do all of our internet options work and occasionally none of them work. Starlink requires a reasonably clear view of the sky. But over the last year, as more satellites come online, we have seen a massive improvement in how Starlink handles obstructions. A year ago, a single small tree may have made things difficult. Now we can camp among trees as long as there's a bit of clearing to set Starlink in. That's what we're doing right here in this campground now. There are lots of trees around me we're in a decent clearing in the middle of them here, but Starlink is definitely pointed towards trees and we are getting decent access to the internet with only a few sort of 15 second outages an hour. Fine for most internet use, not so great for things like Zoom meetings. If you're leading a meeting and you're gonna cut out for 15 seconds, three or four times an hour, that can be really embarrassing. Access to a clearing like this is one of the benefits of not mounting the dish on your RV. I can move it around the campsite to get the best view of the sky. We've seen speeds as low as one megabit per second during peak hours, but it's been a very long time since that's happened. We usually get around 50 megabits per second downloads and 10 megabits per second uploads. The upload speed has improved over time, definitely. It used to be much worse for us. We also travel with another family. They're on the RV plan, that's now the mobile plan, which is supposed to be a lower priority than our plan. They usually though receive similar speeds to us, but occasionally their service has been slower, usually again in a busy area. We used Starlink for a month in Baja, California flawlessly. In fact, we had the best speeds we've ever had in Mexico. There are so many places we've been able to travel since purchasing Starlink that we could not have gone before without having to drive to a coffee shop for internet, sometimes an hour away plus. We've experienced a couple of total outages in our time with Starlink, both under an hour, but overall the system has been pretty robust with very few outages. I do have a few concerns that when Starlink goes down, the whole system kind of seems to go down, and that seems like a flaw in the system, but we'll see how it goes going forward. Again, it's not really been too much of an issue. Ordering Starlink is relatively easy and can be done through the Starlink website. However, it's important to note that not everyone can order the fixed location plans at this time. Due to high demand and limited satellite capacity, Starlink is operating on a first come first serve basis in many areas. And there's a waiting list for new customers. Now they have recently made a lot more areas available. So if you haven't checked in a long time, you might wanna check again. When you go to the Starlink website, you can enter your service address to see if Starlink is available in your area and to join the waiting list with a deposit. Once your order is confirmed, you will receive a notification from Starlink regarding the estimated delivery date of your equipment. Dishes on the mobile plans will be shipped out right away. It usually takes seven to 14 days for most people to get them. Starlink charges $50 for shipping and handling and usually ships via FedEx. So if you're trying to get it on the road, one of the best ways to get it is to actually have it shipped to a FedEx office store. 
we recommend ordering a backup cable from Starlink, especially if you're an RVer and will be moving the dish around wherever you go. You want to avoid being in a situation where you have to wait a couple of weeks for a replacement cable if yours gets damaged. And Starlink now offers easy transfers of dishes between users who are selling them used. Now, unfortunately, this has opened up an opportunity for many scammers. We recommend you directly buy from Starlink or from someone that you know. While Starlink deserves praise for its fast and mostly reliable internet service, some customers have reported issues with its customer service. We've heard many complaints of people waiting weeks for an answer. There's no direct way to contact Starlink customer service. The only way to get in touch with them is by going to the website's troubleshooting section and clicking the thumbs down when it says, did this solve your problem? The site then allows you to submit a support ticket and we've heard lots of people just waiting and waiting for somebody to answer that support ticket. Some people have had luck and they get, they get an answer right away, but uh, you know, you might end up going a month without internet. So this is another reason to have some sort of backup plan. Overall, Starlink is an excellent option for those in rural areas with limited access to reliable internet or those intending to travel to rural areas. Just ensure that you know what to expect before you sign up and understand the customer service limitations. And if the internet is crucial to your life, make sure to have at least one backup cellular option. If you're stationary and have access to another internet service, it might be more affordable and at better speeds and latency. It could be worth taking the time to research other providers in your area. That's everything I know about Starlink right now. Like I said, I have a blog post with all of this information in it if you wanna look at there in the description. And I hope you got something out of this video. If it helped, please hit the like button. If you want more like this, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one. Bye everybody.